grace and peace. Journey to your destiny place with the Destiny Community Church. We are Upward Bound. and peace journey to your destiny place with the destiny community church we are upward bound hey good sunday morning my destiny community church family hope you guys are doing well uh, broadcasting for a little bit on location. Uh, as you are already know, I'm not uh, your pastor. This is Pastor Gerald Searle so standing in for uh, your beloved pastor, Reverend Dr. Wiley White Jr. while he continues uh, his path to recovery and improvement. Uh, sends his blessings and greetings to all of you. Uh, thank you guys for hanging in there with me while uh, we try to do our best to hold the fort down while he's out. Again, we solicit your prayers and uh, for a speedy recovery for your beloved pastor. Uh, we won't hold you long today. Again, it's the final Sunday of April. I uh, hope you're finding uh, the springtime to be to your liking and that you're getting out and enjoying the warmer. I don't know how warm it is where you are, but hopefully it's warmer and better. Uh, that does bring some showers. But however, uh, we've uh, moved past the winter season and now we are in a whole new season. Uh, that will probably preach right there into a whole different season. Again, I'm Pastor Gerald Searle, standing for your pastor, and welcome to the Community Destiny Community Church broadcast. Well, I won't hold you long this morning. I want to jump right into the Word. Uh, I want to uh, continue this final part, this three-part series, um, and how to have the life you want. And with the subtopic, it's all about the form. We're coming from Romans chapter 12. Uh, verses one and two will finalize uh, this series, turn into a three-part series. Uh, this is the final series, part three, um, how to have the life you want. Uh, and so I want you to repeat after me today, I'm in the right place at the right time to receive a word from the divine. That would be God today. And every day I'm in the right place at the right time to receive a word from the divine. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you right now for the blessedness of this moment right now. Uh, we solicit your being to uh, open our hearts, our being that we can hear from heaven, uh, connect in soul and purpose, uh, that which you would have us to be here on this earth. Thank you for Dr. White and this ministry and all that you assigned this ministry to be. Uh, bless every ear that, that, that hear and every eye that watch. We send blessings of grace, abundance, love, peace, and mercy uh, as those are attributes that you want all of your children have. We thank you for this divine occasion, this divine, divine opportunity for us in your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Again, this is the final uh, part of this three-part series, uh, how to have the life you want uh, with the subtopic of it's all about the form. I won't go back and talk about, really talk too much about the previous two messages, uh, but you know that we talked about uh, having to go back to when, when we talked about, Gen talk, spoke on Genesis, rather, uh, talking about who we were created to be and how life has weighed us down with all of the burdens and the heaviness and the darkness of life. And it channels as chokes out our light. And so when we get here in Paul's writing, he said, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then uh, you will be able to test and prove uh, what God's will is. And so we want to speak from this last part today about renewing of your mind. For Christians, the mind is a significant, is as significant uh, as it has believed to be the seat of human consciousness, thought, and decision making. 
It's the seed of our conscious mind. We hear, we talk a lot about love and prayer and being born again and all those things. But I think uh, we probably do ourselves a disservice as believers, pastors included, that we don't talk enough about the mind. Because when you think about it, Everything originates in mind. There's nothing that comes out of your mouth that didn't originate in your mind. There's nothing that's in your heart that doesn't originate in your mind. And so today, uh, we want to focus on this renewing of the mind. This word renewing uh, is kind of a, uh, a, an oxymoron. Uh, it's, it's kind of a dichotomous oxymoron. It, it's that way it says because to redo something means you've done it before. But then new means it's never been done before. Let that sit in for a while. So he says, I need you to renew. That word just really doesn't make any sense. If it's re, that means it's been done before. If it's new, that means it's brand new. But he says that we need to renew our mind. New our mind. Here's what most of us do with our mind most of the time. Your mind is either focused on something that's happened or something that you think is going to happen. It's either focusing on one or two things most of the time. Very seldom are we present in the moment. Right now, many of you probably watching this, listening to this, and multitasking while you're doing so. Listen, I'm not here to judge you. I, I think multitasking is the, is the enemy of progress. Uh, it keeps us from focusing on one thing. I'm, I'm doing away with a lot of things. Um, to make sure that I be present. But most of the time, people are either reliving or thinking about something that's already happened or anxious about something that's going to happen. And when that happens, it doesn't afford your mind to create anything new. And let me, let me just lay the foundation. If you're focusing on the path, that leads to depression. If you're focusing on the future, that usually leads to anxiety. And somewhere in the middle, there's a balance where you need to have to focus on the future or your past or the things that keep you from being present so that you can receive the download. You can receive the, the word from God, from uh, when God is trying to speak. It's hard to hear God when your focus is not present. And believe it or not, present is the only way you can hear God clearly. Without all the noise and all the things, you're right here. You're present. You tune out all the noise. You say, hey, God, I, I, I'm assigning myself this moment to be present with you. The mind, hear me when I tell you, it can only regurgitate <clears throat> that which it already knows. Let, let me say that again. It can only regurgitate. It can only bring back to you that which is already known. You'll only receive new and vital information when your mind is clear and you're fully present. Which means you have to slow down and be present to receive. See, one of the things I'm thoroughly convinced of, that life is designed the way things are now with politics and religion and education, all these systems of the world that we talked about in previous uh, messages, they're designed to keep us busy, keep our attention on something else. You ever notice that one thing barely leaves the headline, something else comes every single day in the news. There's always something that's commanding our attention. We're busy being husbands and wives. We're busy being employees. We're busy being parents. We're busy, you know, going to to and from, and we're always on to the next thing. And that, saying so God, is the enemy, is the enemy of our, our progress, because we're never still long enough to be still, as the scripture says in Proverbs, be still and know that I'm God. Did, did you hear what he said? Be still and know that I'm God. In other words, you got to sit down and just be for a minute. No, I'm not thinking about what I got to do at work tomorrow. I'm not thinking about what the kids got to do. I'm not thinking about what the next thing. I'm sitting here in one thing, thinking about the next thing and never fully present. But the, the, the proverb writer says, be still and know that I'm God. Let, let, me, let, me, just, let me just jump in here and, 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 and share with you how powerful the mind is. The first thing I want you to know is that mind is always constantly recycling everything that's happened. It's recycling, recycling meaning it's bringing back all the things. Now, usually I can say this, that most of us will say that uh, uh, it's not the things of the spirit that gives us problems. 
Remember, I shared with you John in chapter 3, Jesus said, listen, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. It's those things that's of the flesh that gives you problems. And I'm trying to get you to a place where you can elevate, you know, and understand how to unlock the heaviness of life, unlock those burdens. Because Jesus actually told you he'll carry those for you. So you can unload those so you can be light enough so that you don't keep recycling the tragedies, the trauma, and the travesties of your life. It recycles. Watch this now. Every time, some of you are going to hit, you're going to see this. Every time you start to make some progress. You start, you start moving and you start, and then all of a sudden, these things start to pop up again. Every time you try to make progress, you thought you dealt with this, you buried such and such, and under the life rumbling, it keep resurfacing just in a different capacity. You keep pondering deep within your recesses, and now life has become one big circle after time. Why? Because the mind recycles. It may not come back, that same trauma and tragedy may not come back to you the way that it was in the previous episode. But when you dig beneath the dirt and the surface of it, it's still the same thing. It recycles over and over and over and over again. And sometimes it just plays it right there. It just plays it right there. It recycles it. And yes, it may be a different job. Yes, it may be a different relationship. Yes, it may be a different city and another location. However, if they say same stuff, different day, it just got recycled. And so your mind keep recycling this same stuff. Well, that's what we do with our garbage, the stuff we have to recycling. But what do they do? They take it in that form, do something with it, and transpose it into something else. It's the same stuff. It's just a different form. And that's what your mind will continue to do. And usually that's not to your benefit. It works on both sides, by the way. If there's pleasurable things that you're thinking on, and I'll share more with that. If it's good things that you're thinking about, those things can be recycled as well. But most of us, we're stressed and strained because we keep recycling the same things over and over and over again. I know I'm preaching to at least a handful of y'all right now. You you know that's you. You know that this same stuff it could be five years from now. It keeps coming up over and over and over again. And you keep thinking that if you just do this one thing, no, no, you, you have to deal with trauma. You have to deal with tragedy. You have to put it in its proper place. I always say now, in my growth, I let things come, but I'll let them know. Well, why is that? Because you, you sometimes you can't stop things from coming, but you can control what they do to you when they come. You can control how long you sit in that stuff that's recycled. You can control that you let it go or let it stay. I read this some years ago that 87% of the people, 87% of the people in this country, in these United States, are stressed highly stressed most of the time. 87%. That day I decided I wasn't going to be in the majority. And it's been an evolution and a journey for me, uh, but I don't live in that place anymore because when you're recycling, it's it just one big loop after another. It's one big loop after another. Life doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Every once in a while, you'll get a breakthrough. You'll get a message. You're like, okay, uh, that was enough for me to hold on. Can, can, can I just pause parenthetically and tell you uh, that a book clock is right twice a day? <laughs> I know y'all ain't going to like this. I, I, you'll be ready for Pastor White to get back. See, see the, even when a, a clock is broken, twice a day is going to be right. What am I telling you? See, you, you, get the, you get these little crumbs every once in a while. You get little crumbs every once in a while. You say, okay, now, now it's coming. But then it's kind of like what you do with New Year's. Every new year, you have a resolution. And by February and March, you waiting on the next year to come in. It's like, you know, I'm ready for 2023 to be gone. And, and so the years don't change. The years may change, but the circumstances stay the same. Why is that? Because life keeps recycling the same stuff over and over and over and over again. How, how to have your life you want. I'm going to take you through a couple of things, then I'm going to drop you off on uh, uh, really how to turn the page in your life. So recycle, number one. Number two, see, when it's recycled, now you start to rehearse it. 
Why, why, why this? Now, now, now you start to rehearse and replay those things over and over that keeps you in that same space. Now, watch this. When you rehearse it and replay it, it elicits the same emotion that it did as if it was really happening. That's how powerful the mind is. Also happen to be uh, a hospice chaplain. I do a lot with grief counseling and working with people. And, and one of the things I'm honored to do is to help families transition, the family, the person who's in our hospice care, help them under the circumstances transition this transition as best as they can under the circumstances. But I got into this because I had a grandmother down in South Carolina and I lived with her quite a bit. And when she died, I almost died with her. And for six months, I, I didn't want to do anything. I monkeyed around and broke my ankle. Uh, the girl I was dating at the time, we had broken up. I'm ready to drop out of school. Because I broke my leg, I couldn't go to work, and I lost my job. I was an absolute mess. And all of this, when my grandmother died, and for years... I kept replaying and rehearsing that when I when when we got ready to I was one of the pallbearers and I couldn't carry her casket because I just couldn't leave her out there in that way. And I rehearsed and replayed. And every single time, every single time I rehearsed that, I, I was in the same space I was on the day of her funeral. You don't have to go that, that, to, to that extent. But you know, those drastic things that pained you, that harmed you, that hurt you, when you keep replaying them, rehearsing them, it feels as though you're still right there in it. And so, and so when, 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 when you rehearse it, now you'll tell that story to anybody who will listen. <laughs> I know you don't like that. you You'll rehearse it and you'll tell it to anybody and everybody who listens. You 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 lying at the grocery store and somebody press play and you telling that same story because now you become good at storytelling and rehearsing. First, it's recycled to get it up to the surface. Now you're rehearsing it and eliciting the same emotions, which means now you're reliving it. Ah, you rehearse it. Uh, you recycle, then you rehearse it. Now you relive it. Can, can I just drop this in your lap? I won't hold you long this morning. Can I drop this in your lap and, and just let you know that every single time you relive it, you keep the thing from dying. You give gas to the fire. You give fertilizer to the grass. Every single time that you relive it, you give fuel to it. And now, rather than become the victorious person that Jesus declared you were, you become identified as a victim. That's your identity now. This poor sister Sally over there, she's a widow. This poor brother Al over there, he broke his leg or he's sick. Whatever the case may be, you become synonymously identified with what you've rehearsed, relived, and retold. And now... Life is really one big circle. This is where most people are right now. We're, we're right here in this place where it just seems like I can't. Every time I take two steps forward, I got to take one backwards. Why? Because something happens that keeps me from moving forward. Can I, can I just pause and tell you what happens? It's the same stuff, different day. It's rehearsed, it's recycled, it's relived, and now you're in the pain. You can't move forward in relationships like, you know, if I could just find me a woman who's such and such, if I could just find me a man who's thus and so, and you get in a relationship and the same thing keeps resurfacing. And it does that because your mind will only regurgitate that which it already knows. God, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I'm getting my own release right now. The mind will only regurgitate what it already knows. That's why it's hard to teach people stuff when you've already learned. In one of my careers, I managed hotels and I always thought, I said, give me, give me somebody who, who don't have hospitality uh, industry experience. Because it's hard to un, for you to unlearn and simultaneously learn. Because when I hired people, oftentimes they would say, well, and you know, at my last job, we did it this way. See, I'm not concerned about your last job. See, that's what the mind tell you. It's only going to tell you what you already know. So when it's time to get new information, most of us will scoff at it. I I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it. Just let it sit in your spirit and your being for a minute. When was the last time you actually learned something when you went to church, when you learned something new? 
And when was the time that you heard something or something wasn't what you already knew, but because of what you already know, you decided that's not for me. See, when you when you keep reliving these experiences and you keep bringing up the same trauma, you, 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 you're, you're crying just like you did before. You, you're, you're in the same spot as you were before. And you become masterful at recanting the misery, the episodic miseries of your life. You, you know anybody like that? I hope I'm not talking to one of them. If it is, this is time for you to get in the mirror and do a gut check, do a spirit check. And I'm going to drop you off with the very thing that Paul told us you can use to do that. He said, the transformation power that you have to get back to who God made you is in the ability to renew your mind. I'm going to put this real simple. How, how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind by putting new information in there. There has to be something new that goes in there that's consistent with, watch this, the, the, the original you. That's why he said renew. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know it's an oxymoron term, however, oxymoronic term, however, uh, he's taking us back to the original you, which was the real new you. And so when he says renew your mind, what you're putting in your mind is consistent and conducive to who God is and who created, we created you to be. Now you're breaking those cycles. You're not in the same circles. You're not recycling. You're not rehearsing. So you got to stop telling those stories about your pain, about your trauma, about those things that just keep your mind circling the same stuff. Paul says you got to renew your mind. I'm telling you, you got to put new stuff in there. You got to put new stuff in there. And watch this. I hear Jesus talking to him in Matthew chapter 10 when they were talking to Jesus and they're trying to get Jesus to understand what is it that defiles us? See, because what your mind conceive, your mouth will speak. Did you, did you hear what I said? It's hard to have a good mind and speak uh, and, and have bad language about it. And I'm not talking about cuss. I'm just talking about your being. Everything is negative. What comes out of your mind is never a good day. There's never anything happening good. It's, there's, it's always something. And so they're questioning Jesus and said, listen, can, can you tell us what, what is it that defiles a man? And Jesus clearly says to them, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse 10, he said, listen, it's not what comes goes into a man that defiles him. It's what comes out of his mouth. As you speak, feel like preaching. As you speak, so are you. As you think, so are you. See, when you think it, you're going to say it. When you say it, you're going to start acting on it. That's how it goes. He says, it's not what you put in your mouth that defiles you. It's what comes out that defiles. And what comes out of your being, what resonates and comes out of your soul when you're speaking, when you're walking, when you're talking, when you're just being. I, I tell people that, that my fundamental purpose to show up every day is to show up as light. If I can't show up as light, you won't see me mostly. Well, why, why do I say that? Because I believe we are the light that Jesus said we are in Matthew's God. We are light. And as things happen sometimes that dim that, yes, it does. But that should be an exception rather than the rule. G Jesus said, it's not what goes in. It's what comes out. I have a saying, I might have shared it with you before. I speak these things out loud. Five, ten, as many times as it come to my being. Healthy mind, healthy body, healthy spirit, healthy soul, healthy relationships, healthy marriage, healthy family, and healthy finance. I, I, I say it at least five ten times a day. And I bet just run around and say, oh, I need to say that. That's who I am. That's how I live. That hasn't always been the case. But I can tell you, the more you say things, your brain, you start to retrain your brain to see things differently. And when your mind is starting to be transformed, your language will be transformed as well. Your, your outlook on life will be transformed as well. Can I tell you there's never anything wrong in the kingdom of God? Did you hear that? There's never 
I mean what I'm saying. Never anything wrong in the kingdom of God. If you subscribe to there's something wrong on earth or in heaven, that tells you your faith in God is in a strong one. And you perhaps may not understand who God really is. There's never, and I do mean never, anything ever wrong in God's kingdom. Everything is exactly as it is. He told you that in Ecclesiastes chapter three. There's a time and a season for everything under the sun. And he goes on to list each and everything that he says there's a time and a place for. Sometimes my, my season is this, sometimes it's that. But whatever it is, I hear you, Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, tell him, uh, uh, preacher, he, he already knows you. He already knows who you are before you were who you became. There's a season for everything. The question isn't to let seasons keep you in cycles of dysfunction and depravity. The question is, how do you make sure your seasons are good ones? Your seasons are welcome and wanted. How is it all that I can renew my mind? Let me, let me give you a checklist and then I'm out of here. Uh, Paul says here, he's talking to the, the Philippian church, Roman, uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. This is what he says. Finally, brothers, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are right, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, whatever things are excellent and praiseworthy, think. I'm out of here now. Think on those things. See, every time, this is how you put new stuff. Every time that recycle, rehearse, and reliving experiences come up, this is what you got to do. Here's your measuring stick. Is it lovely? Is it an admirable? Is it excellent? Is it praiseworthy? Because if it isn't one of those things, you're just recycling. You're rehearsing and you're reliving those things that keep you from moving forward and having the abundant life. Do you hear what I said? Having the abundant life. I, I hear you, Jesus. Jesus hollered over my ear, time to go. But he also said, preach, don't leave before tell him. I didn't come that you just have life. God, I feel like preaching. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That's the period on the sentence. Didn't just come that you could live, just exist to pay bills, just show up to be here in the place and just, just walk it in circles all while you're in your human state. I said, I didn't come that you just might do that. Exist. I came, Jesus said, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. How can I do that? Now I gotta retrain, renew my mind from all of the stuff, from all of the trash and the trash that the world has placed in there. I, I, I gotta put new stuff in there. Every time you wanna you wanna know where you are, you wanna know where your life is and where it's going, measure yourself with Paul said, whatever things are lovely and admirable and excellent. And of good report, think on those things. Think on those things. You want to have a life that you want? You want to have a life that God has prescribed for you? Think on those things. Renew every time. When it comes and it's painful and it's rehearsing, when you're living in the past and you, 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 you're depressed about something that's already happened that you have no way of changing, when you're anxious about something in the future that you don't even know whether it's going to happen or not, yeah. yeah, you got you to gotta be present. You can't be in the future or the past. How to be present. Why that? Because at that place, God has your full attention in whatever moment you're in. And I can tell you this much from my own life experiences. God is always showing and sharing and speaking. Most will miss that because we're either too busy about what happened or we too worried about what we think is going to happen. And God's just saying, hey, here I am. Here I am. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to show you, but I can't, I, can't, I can't make you get all that stuff out of there. It doesn't happen. You can't change it. Can you let it come and let it go? Can you deal with it appropriately so you can move on? How to have the life you want. 
how to have the life that you want. It's, it's all about the form. You, you, that, that form that he created, created you in, that form. That's the one that's going to get you there. I'll say this finally again, as I said in the previous message, uh, it goes against all the world systems. I, I know that hurts some of you because you 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 want to you 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 want everything in the abundance of God, but you still want to hold on to the world systems. And I'm telling you, categorically, you can name any one of them you want to. They go against who God created you to be. And when you clear all of that out, when you're present and able to hear God and see God everywhere, in everything, all the time, because that's who he is. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient and he's omnipresent. Everywhere, all knowing at all times. And when you clear all of that out, you realize he's right here got to leave now. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Listen, uh, I hope you'll like, share, and uh, encourage others to hang out with us while we're standing instead for Dr. White. Uh, if you heard something that compelled you to want to become part of the family of God, a part of Destiny Community Church, please reach out to us by any of our uh, any of our platforms. Uh, we ask you to give and sow into this ministry as Pastor White I have great plans, international, global plans uh, to serve and be a light, uh, not just in the United States, but all over the world. You see it there on the screen, ways to give. And we thank you for being a part of what God has given him the vision for. Lots of things coming in the future, hang in there. Uh, we don't believe that anything is out of order. Uh, everything is exactly as it should be. So as Pastor White continues to recover, uh, we want to do our best to encourage you, support you. Uh, anything that you need that uh, Destiny Church can be a blessing to you with, uh, please reach out to us by the platform that you uh, hear us and see us on. And uh, we'll surely um, give our due diligence uh, to your needs and your requests. We thank you again for the blessedness of grace. Um, Every day, every single day, I'm always in the right place at the right time and the right things always happen. Father, we thank you for this divine occasion and opportunity to share. And for every eye that sees this message, every ear that hears, we pray that it resonates in the soul. That it reach every ear that's supposed that we know that all things are already all right. We thank you for divine order and divine favor. Until next time. Blessings.